Streptococcus. Streptococcus are gram positive foci. They are arranged in chains or pairs. These are a part of normal human flora and many other animals. Some of them are human pathogens also. The most important streptococci are streptococcus pyogenes. So like the pyo is there, that means pus inducing, pus producing. So that is the pyogenic infections are the characteristic of this streptococcus pyogenes. And they have the tendency to spread. The size variation will result from the various cultural conditions. Chain formation is there due to cocci dividing in one plane only and the daughter cells failing to separate completely. So they form the chain. Okay. So they were first seen in uh, by the in uh, erysipelas and the wound infection by Belroth in 1874, who called them streptococci. Then Oxton in 1881 isolated them from the abscess. Then Rosenbach in 1884 isolated from the human separated lesions. Now, if we see the classification of streptococci on the basis of hemolysis on the blood agar, these are alpha hemolytic, beta hemolytic, and gamma hemolytic. Alpha hemolytic means partial hemolysis is there, so green discoloration will be there. Lysis zone is very small, 1 to 2 millimeter. Because of unlysed erythrocyte present, the green color will be there. They are called as viridense streptococci also. So they include the normal common cells in throat and opportunistic infection. Now coming to the beta hemolytic, there the sharply defined clear colorless zone of hemolysis is there. 2 to 4 millimeter white zone is there. Full lysed erythrocytes are there. That is why the clear zone is present. There are, these includes most pathogenic streptococci. Gamma hemolytic streptococci, there is no change in the medium when grown on the blood agar because there is they don't hemolyze. Now these include the fecal streptococci, that is enterococcus group. On the basis of carbohydrate and antigen, they have classified into the, they are called lensified group. So they are grouped in this lensified group. These include all the hemolytic group. The name was, these are given by lensifield. And these are serologically, they are classified on the basis of the nature of the, on the presence of the carbohydrate antigen that is in the cell wall. They are also known as lensifield group. Till now, 20 lensifield group have been identified, A to B. In between I and J are not there. The third group, third is the oxygen requirement. So on the basis of oxygen requirement, obligate, facultative, and anaerobic streptococci are there. Then on the basis of biochemical properties, they are classified. Coming to the cultural characteristics, they are aerobically facultative and uh, they are uh, aerobic. They can be facultative and aerobic also. Best they grow at 37 degrees centigrade but the variation they can grow between 22 to 42 degree but the optimum temperature for their growth is 37 they are very exacting in their nutrient requirement now coming to the virulence factor and the pathogenicity the disease caused by streptococcus pyogenes can be separative and non or non separative so they include the sequel to the post streptococcus infection also so they include the pyogenic infection and they have the tendency to spread locally along the lymphatics and through the bloodstream coming to the cell wall associated factor if we see so the first is the capsule then the carbohydrate antigen third is the protein antigen so the capsule which is if it is present, it inhibits the phagocytosis. Carbohydrate antigen on the basis of that lancifield group is given. Then protein antigen, these are the several proteins are present there on the outer part of the cell wall. Like M protein, this is the most important protein that is used for the typing as well as for the virulence. Here we can see this is the M protein. After the M protein, the T protein is also there. The T protein, it is very important. It is acid labile trypsin resistant antigen. And these are present in the many serotypes of the streptococcus pyogenes. Then R proteins are also there. Here we can see T and R proteins. These are also, they have no relation to the virulence, but these are a non-specific uh, protein, non-type specific protein associated with the M protein. Now, next is the pili or the fimbri. So these pili, these are the pili or the fimbri. They are the hair-like structure. They projected through the capsule of the streptococcus, group A streptococci. Now, coming to the toxin and the enzymes present in the streptococcus species. So different toxins and enzymes like hemolysin, 
which involve hemolysis streptolysin o streptolysin s then streptococcus pyogenic exotoxin that is spe third is the streptokinase that is fibrinolysin fourth is the deoxyribonuclease that is the dnases nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide that is the nadases then hyaluronidase serum opacity factor and other enzymes so all these are present in the streptococcus species firstly we will see the hemolysin so we will take the comparative look for both streptolysin o and s so these are oxygen labile that is why the name o is given these are oxygen stable that is why the name s is given so on the basis of this we can see different characteristics are there these are in the streptolysin o hemolysis is seen only the subsurface but here it is a on these uh, hemolysis either can be seen around the streptococcal colonies on the surface of the blood agar okay here it is subsurface here it is surface again it is heat labile it is heat stable these are antigenic and these are this is a protein but not antigenic they play very important role in as in the virulence but they don't play very any role in the virulence coming to the streptococcal pyogenic exotoxin uh, exotoxin that is se these are called as erythrogenic or dick or scatenal toxin so these was named because uh, their intradermal injection into the susceptible individual produce the erythematous rash so erythematous reaction because of that the name pyogenic exotoxin or erythrogenic toxin is given there are three types of spe that are a b and c spe one more important thing is that they are called as the super antigens okay so these are very uh, that is the very important point to understand because these uh, these are the, these are called as super antigens these are the t cell mitogens they induce the massive release of inflammatory cytokines and they cause the which cause the tissue damage fever and shock others are the streptokinases deoxyribonucleases dnases and types of dnases are a b c and d they have also been recognized in the human uh recognized and they are most antigenic in the human for the human now uh, nicotinamide uh, adenine dinucleotidase uh, dnas they are formally they are called as the dpnas they again act as a coenzyme act on the coenzyme nad and liberate the nicotinamide from the molecule they are antigenic in nature they are glycotoxic next group is the hyaluronidase so these enzyme break the hyaluronic acid of that in the present in the tissue and which favor the infection spread in the and along the intracellular space the next was the serum opacity factor as we have seen earlier also these are serial, these are also playing very important role in the virulence so this is a virulence determinant of the organism okay next is the uh, next uh, the other enzymes which are present are the proteinase phosphatase esterase amidase and acetyl gluco uh, glucosaminidase neuraminidase and but these enzymes the role of these enzymes is not clear coming to the pathogenicity of the streptococcal diseases firstly the separative infection separative infection separative diseases in which firstly we will see the respiratory infection so the primary site of invasion is the throat so sore throat that is the most common streptococcal disease and it is localized as tonsillitis or it can spread to the pharynx or pharyngitis also okay so in this what is happening the it is uh, uh, streptococcal that will go colonize there and then they will cause the separative complication like uh, once the infection if the infection is not uh, uh, cured within the time it can be other complication like otitis media mastitis and all these things can be can occur next is the skin and soft tissue infection so they cause the separative infection of the skin including the wounds burns all these things they will predilection to produce the lymphangitis and cellulitis okay so two type of streptococcal infection of the skin as well that is erysipels and impetigo so erysipels these are the diffuse infection involving the superficial lymphatics okay and the affected skin is red swollen and indurated it is sharply demarcated from the surrounding healthy area by while impetigo it is belonging to the limited number of serotype usually higher number instead of lower number of m types it causes the throat infection impetigo and streptococcal infection of scabies lesions are the main cause of acute glomerular nephritis in the children in the tropics coming to the necrotizing fasciitis so after 
uh, respiratory infection and the skin infection we can see the necrotizing fasciitis so that is also uh, these lead to the cellul from cellulitis to necrotizing fasciitis so it is a more commonly called by the mixed aerobic and anaerobic bacterial infection and here these have uh, flesh eating bacteria they can be known as flesh eating because necrotizing term is here okay so they uh, here what they will do they will necrosis of the subcutaneous tissues will be there and muscular tissues will be there and the adjacent fascia is also associated with the severe symptomatic uh, systematic illness so this is also a toxic shock like syndrome in which is disseminated intravascular coagulation with the and the multiple system failure so this is very dangerous and that that is why this is called as flesh eating bacteria because whole everything is here uh, all the degeneration of the flesh is taking place here now coming to the toxic shock syndrome soft tissue infection with the m type of uh, streptococcus pyogenes and this necrotizing ntss they occur in the person that is not immune to be infecting m types now genital infection also let's say that is a perpetual fever is caused by endogenous infection now other separative infection that will be abscess in the internal organ brain lungs liver kidney and septicemia and pyemia is there non separative disease may be in this acute rheumatic fever and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis so here what is happening the pathogenesis will be that sequence is the uh, the that will be the uh, uh, rheumatic fever is carditis essential lesion in the rheumatic fever is carditis including connective tissue degeneration of the heart valve and inflammatory myocardial cardiac lesion and that is characterized by ash of nodule okay so this is the characteristic of the this uh, acute rheumatic fever and after that that is the sequel of the post streptococcal infection now rheumatic fever follows the persistent and the repeated streptococcal throat infection with a strong antibody response to some rheumatogenic strain the lesions are believed to be the result of hypersensitivity and some streptococcal component here we can see the primary site of infection in the acute rheumatic fever is the throat but the post streptococcal glomerulonephritis nephritis is the throat and skin prior sensitization is essential but here it is not essential okay so all these are the comparison coming to the epidemiology that we can see that they colonize the upper respiratory tract nasopharynx nose of patients and the carriers then spread this is by the direct contact or the contaminated fomites now in the this infection of the streptococcus respiratory tract these are more frequent with the, with the children of 5 to 8 years of age and the children below 2 years and in the adults also they are common in the winter and temperate in the temperate countries no seasonal distribution have been identified crowding is important factor in the transmission of this infection now immunity is type specific appears to be associated with the antibody to the m protein reinfection occur because of the multiplicity of the serotype if we go for the typing we can go for the mtr protein based typing and the m typing coming to the lab diagnosis lab diagnosis can be done by the specimen will be throat swab pulse exudates rheumatic fever may the serum will be collected for cultures everything will be serum swabs uh, for the culture swabs will be collected and it will be culture then microscopy will be there that cultures will be there that will be on the blood agar liquid media nutrient agar then identification will be done on the basis of different biochemical test and the rapid uh, for antigen detection rapid diagnostic kits will also be there that will give the rapid test for the biochemical reaction serologically the that will be uh, that will demonstrate the high level of antibody to streptococcal toxin the anti aso titer as aso titer streptol anti streptolysin o titer that will be higher than 200 that is the indicative of the prior streptococcal infection okay so this way we can see the treatment of this infection is the all the beta hemolytic group a streptococci they are sensitive to penicillin g in the patient allergic to penicillin azithromycin and cefalexin may be used tetracycline and sulfonamides are not recommended antimicrobial drugs have no effect on established glomerulonephritis basitracin have been used for the local application and skin lesion prophylaxis is again prevention of the directed at the prevention of rheumatic fever it is achieved by long term administration of penicillin in the children who have developed the early sign of rheumatic fever because it is a post sequel infection of the post streptococcal infection so the long term uh, administration of the antibiotic is recommended